power went out last night. That's right. I had no power last night. And uh, so I didn't take my bath and I didn't shave at night like I often do. And that's okay. I've been a bachelor for four years in a town where I don't ever see a person who's new. I really couldn't care what I look like until it's showtime. And then I'm like, well, sorry, folks. Uh, anyways, I have my morning coffee here with my Diggy's Diner Cup here in Wells, British Columbia, home of the Caribou Weather Dude TV show right here, my own TV station here, live on YouTube channel. So, meteorologist Mark said the thing that that uh, I wanted to say yesterday but didn't, and now I kind of regret it because I could have been the guy who said it first. But there's a slight risk of tornado today in British Columbia, yeah, in southeastern BC. Slight risk. And, you know, we're not talking... I don't think we're going to see F3 monsters. No, we're we're talking about, you know, spin-up tornadoes that could happen. Short-lived and probably weak in strength. Maybe enough to tear some shingles off kind of thing. Tear some branches off and throw them around, you know. Tornadoes nonetheless, right? So, exciting. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything could happen. Get on! Wow. I'll watch the video later. Stay dry mopping this. This forecast brought to you by CanadianTraining.ca, launching October 1st. It's training for you, your business, your team, including mental well-being and public-facing roles, PR superpowers, becoming the broadcaster, how to use media and audio to have a better uh, impact on your audience, messaging, speaking, being the media, and all that. So you can join the newsletter list now for exclusive insider previews and extra early bird pricing. ButterflyEffectCommunications.ca, CanadianTraining.ca. .ca, CanadianTraining.ca. This is the group that I run on Facebook called Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers. 38,000 people. One of the moderators on there is Bob Holowenko. He'll be coming on the show with us tomorrow night on the podcast at 7 p.m. Pacific time here on Joey on the Caribbean Weather Dude YouTube channel to talk about. Uh, he's a search and rescue technician. He's one of the leaders in Quinnell. He's going to be talking about uh, the search for Oakland last week and, you know, what it's just like to be search and rescue uh, technician. Maybe... Maybe some of you out there will hear this and think, wow, I could do that stuff and maybe join. So the great news today is we're at 30, 38,000 members now. 38,000 members. The group keeps growing. If you live in the BC interior, feel free to come join us. group that I founded 10 years ago and is really really uh, come into its own. Another one of our moderators is Mark Engels, meteorologist. And what is meteorologist Mark saying today? Well, here's the NATOcast. This is the NATOcast.com. You can go to here find models for where natos might be today uh so tornado the nader could happen right look at that southeastern bc and i wanted to say this yesterday and we have very high dew points very high dew points mark was pointing out yesterday but also the temperatures yesterday hit higher than we were expecting you know i was thinking maybe we'd see 27s 28s we saw some 31s and higher uh down south so much hotter and much more dew point available today so everything's ready to go right and the cold front's moving through so isolated weak tornado in the southeastern part of the province wouldn't surprise me today says meteorologist mark Engels. in front of the cold fronts there's a ton of warm moist air and plenty of energy to produce strong thunderstorms the main severe risk today is strong and wind gusts generally from the cusp to cranbrook and the u.s border to highway one but you know look at it's really interesting that despite the fact i think a significant amount of thunderstorm activity is going to be in washington state today it's not where the naders are predicted here of course well there's higher chance of naders going on today if you are over here and uh, looks like georgia and up the carolinas and then even into virginia up that appalachia sort of area looks like naders could be happening there naders joey knows yeah sometimes i do mark knows maybe better than me he's uh a meteorologist. Here's Juna Birchwater just pointing out too that uh, yesterday we had very high temperatures in British Columbia, record levels for this time of year: 31.7 in Merritt, 30 in Olitna, Soyuz, 30.2 in Princeton, 30 in Castlegar, 29.8 Warfield, 29.3 Summerland, 29.2 Penticton, 29.1 Creston, even Ashcroft, Kelowna, and Cranbrook getting on those lists. Just a notch warmer than we thought it was going to get. We do have special weather statements that reflect more or less what we're expecting down there so here's that more or less the same special weather statement we saw yesterday we read in the channel here yesterday right late season thunderstorm potential with very strong wind gusts heavy downpours that kind of thing so nothing new on the special weather statement i'm sure that we'll see some severe watches later on in the day we do have a new warning here 
Uh, rainfall warning in effect, 40 to 60 millimeters for North Columbia and Kinbasket. So we're looking at that strong funnel system across today, bringing heavy showers and thunderstorms. Heaviest rain expected this morning through the afternoon. Uh, the stronger amounts could come within thunderstorms itself. Storms that do develop will likely, 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 like, like, likely, likely, uh, now what was I said? Likely increase the chance for repeated heavy downpours from multiple thunderstorms over the same area, resulting in locally heavy rainfalls. Yes, we know, we know, we know. Okay, Bella Coola still looking at you. 120 km an hour gusts of wind today expected. Wow, intense low pressure. The remnants of Typhoon Pulse Sand will bring strong winds to BC coast on Thursday. Palusan. Interesting remark. Uh, we'll cross the BC offshore waters on Thursday, reaching the coast overnight, and then proceeding to track inland during the day. So this is the storm that I've been looking at all week. This is the one. This is the one. It's going to be good. Uh, winds will diminish through the day on Friday. So we're looking at this coming in. Right next, we'll have a we'll have a good view at this one as we go Alberta as well. You're seeing rainfall, well, wind warnings, uh, 100 km hour wind gusts. So uh, I did see somebody on the channel here was out camping out by the Rockies, and when they saw the 100 km hour wind gusts maybe coming to Alberta, they decided to drive their motorbike home, and they said that they are 74 years old. And I said, well, uh, that's you're a little too old to want to put up with that kind of weather, even if you can. Uh, we do have the risk of a tornado also in, as well in uh, this section of Ontario, which is just outside of my mother's region over here, uh, north on Highway 62. But uh, 30 to 50 millimeters of rain up to 2 centimeter diameter uh, hail and a risk of a tornado this afternoon in the early evening. So despite it being early autumn, a tornado or two cannot be ruled out. And we've gone back two days here in the surface chart. Mark loves this surface chart. It's from uh, National Oceanic A Atmospheric Administration. And uh, I love this chart too because uh, he reminded me it exists. So here's center low pressure two days ago. And we can see how the long comma is out there stretching out. Now we're going to go, go forward. And now we see that low pressure is kind of broken down. You know, there's not much left of it. You know, it's not the same center of organization it was, but still that cold front drags in behind. And that's sort of this lower stretch. Often when you see these mid-latitude cyclones coming through, you know, when you see them coming through parts in the States, it's that lower end of the tail where often the most chaos comes through tornado-wise and things like that. We just happen to have that low end of the tail happening today right on cue for like the warmest time of day or whatever, right? So this low cold front's going to be passing through now. Uh, the low has already established itself inland. The cold front's going to be passing through, make its way into eastern BC later this afternoon. And by that time, things should be quite warm. We're going to have a real transition of clashes. So here's our, you can see the line for where our cold front is passing through BC right now. You can see central Ontario, strong storms there moving through. And then we also see this new hurricane moving through we'll talk about that in a few minutes about to hit florida a very strong situation there so here we are in bc coming overnight and thursday uh in the thursday morning but overnight you see the snow up in the high mountains right lots of precip in the rockies and the columbias and whatnot so even southern bc gonna be getting a little bit of rainfall through this right and uh have a look at this hurricane hitting florida uh oh oh that does not look good no that's that's we're in for a bad situation florida okay so batting down the hatches in the next two days big hurricane coming to florida and, uh, well, we, we kind of knew that was going on, but um, it's just going to stall out there, it seems like, in the middle of the, the middle of middle, middle America. Here is our concern, though, on Wednesday. Most unstable cape, right? Convective available potential energy. That's the big-time thunderstorm juice. And as you can see, there's a, you know, there's always a lot of it down there in the Gulf of Mexico, but there's not always a lot of it in British Columbia. No, not at all, actually. In fact, uh these kind of values that you're seeing on the maps right now often are what it takes to have explosive storms here, especially we have the topography, we have being close to the north, but also having the access to warm weather. We can have sometimes uh, very, very big clashes going on in our, our weather here, you know, terrain wise and frontal wise, right? Coming off the ocean as well. So some, it doesn't take a lot of cape to make thunderstorms happen in BC. You know, we've seen this many, many times over the years. So because we have that convective inhibition and we have that cape both showing up in southeastern BC. So we know that there is a risk that storms could be very, very strong there for absolute certain. Okay, well, here's our hurricane down here. Maybe we should just take a second and have a look at this hurricane. What's going on, hurricane? This is Storm Helene. 
Uh, oh, here we have a, a chance, a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours uh, south of Canadian uh, Atlantic provinces. So eyes are on that, definitely. And here's a 50% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. So sustained wind, 70 knots, 80 miles per hour, 979 central low pressure. So that's that central low pressure. Look at that, 979 millibar. Well, why am I bringing this all up? Because we don't usually talk about American hurricanes much here. But 979 central low pressure. Well, what do we have in our storms in BC right now? Currently, the one coming in off the coast, the next one, is 995 right however we anticipate that storm to deepen and by thursday afternoon she's at a 980 980 that's pretty strong okay well didn't that last one didn't that hurricane that we're talking about devastating florida have a 979 central low pressure yes yes it did right so when i've been saying lately th this one's backed off a little bit but we were having storms coming through the north pacific that are hurricane strength and people have to understand i'm not saying they are hurricanes i'm saying that they uh are playing with some of the same energy okay so these are not hurricanes hurricanes are very different how they form than mid-latitude cyclones so we finally come into a little bit of a break after this and we may even have a bit of a nice weekend ahead so that's nice uh despite getting slammed on friday but here's the next storm coming on and it's out there on sunday in the ocean it's hitting down to 980 millibars 976 968 so they're still predicting this one to get really really sunk in really low so i've been trying to explain to you that the strength of these storms out in the pacific right now well i live in the coast i've seen rain before yeah you fucking have dude but uh this is why experience is a poor thing to base our understanding of things on say well what's your experience well oh it rains often here so we have this way of recollecting things in a way that's convenient for our narratives that we're trying to put at the time and not great for deducing facts so we know in the scientific world that that the worst uh the worst thing that we can rely on is human memory scattered flurries going on today in northern british columbia gonna have heavy rain sit in vancouver up to pemberton whistler could see a little mix of rain and snow there as well for you thunderstorm should be starting in that central interior we're thinking sometime soonish you know in the next few hours uh what have i got here it's 9 25 right now uh recording on the 25th of September, yes, 25th of September. Next couple hours, we could probably see that line somewhere in here start to have its fire its first cells up, right? And in behind that be this heavy wave of precipitation that looks like uh, somewhere east of Blue River, northeast of Revelstoke, it's going to really, really sock in tonight and really get a lot of rain. Uh, a little bit heavy uh through the quinnell lake mcbride area as well we're expecting today at least on ecmwf modeling so here is storms picking up by one o'clock uh moderate risk through a soil use in penticton Kelowna. stronger risk as you get a little further north looks like into that revelstoke salmon arm i think that that you have a good chance in the shoe swap of seeing some pretty strong thunderstorms today so we're watching this area seymour arm alvola and of course this is where we're expecting to see out by mica creek expecting to see that uh flooding possibly today right uh, extreme rainfall i don't know if it's extreme sorry sometimes i just say things heavy rainfall uh rainfall warning in effect for them right so we watch that storm come through well by three o'clock we're looking at it really really pulling itself together enough that we could Probably by then, your slight risk through a soil penticton, that's probably going to increase now to a pretty strong risk. Looks like some of the stronger storms that will be happening. Uh, penticton, Kelowna, Cherryville. These are all really solid markers, uh, really strong signs, actually. So Salmon Arm and North between Salmon Arm, Revel Stoke, up to Seymour Arm. So these are the same area still up to Micah Creek that we're really, really watching on this afternoon. So rainfall is the one story. And of course, that does continue. Some of these thunderstorms are happening down in Washington State as well. But it looks like we're getting we're getting the real wallop of it. Sycamus. Sycamus. I'd circle Sycamus on the map. If uh, models are saying that, I would circle Sycamus. You're probably going to see something pretty awesome there this afternoon. So, um, yeah, the risk in southeastern BC for thunder, uh, tornado spin up. Yeah, I mean, it's there. It's there. On ECMWF modeling, it really seems like that southeast corner is getting a bit of a pass. 
So it's all about the timing, really. Because if you can imagine, on that modeling, the timing seems to be more to the west, right? You look at that other map, or the, the Nader cast map, and the, it had it more to the east. But when I look at where the coal front is today, I wonder if the timing is going to settle further to the east, right? So if the Nader cast is maybe more accurate than the ECMWF model we just looked at. So these are the kind of things I try to give you the options, right? Try to try to help you see. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm making a good show today or not. I'm just talking out my ass today. It feels like, like I don't know. The power went out last night and I was just like, whew, you know what you do when you've been single for years and the power goes out? you hum and you whistle you talk to nobody and i have my fucking phone i didn't plug it in i didn't take frankie's advice so i didn't even plug my phone in well ahead of time i didn't just so i didn't couldn't even talk to the world i just yeah i got through the night it's okay you know there's two kinds of people in the world. There's the guys like me that sit there and go. And then there's the people who uh, the power goes out. And the first thing they do is they go out and start their generator. And I don't get that. It's like, why would you come live in a town like fucking Wells? You know, it's like there's the old fashioned way out here, man. It wasn't that long ago. We didn't have cell phone service. It wasn't that long. ago We didn't have Internet here. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago, man. All you got to do is sit with your thoughts. So, you know, in the next couple of days between now and Saturday morning, still looking at, you know, 60s, 70s, and 80s up in the Coast Mountains for rainfall. And uh, even Surf Inlet still, who's taking the bulk of the majority, 90 up there, up by Terrace. You know, so some hard hard rain's going to fall. And if you're over by uh, Micah Creek area, you could see 60, 70 mils there. Uh, there's a, only a few spots in all of BC where basically nothing is going to fall. And, uh, well, we'll see about that. Maybe Osoyoos gets a skip. Maybe Trail gets a skip. These are places that, you know, are t- kind of dry to begin with. But uh, for the most part, most of us here are going to see something, right? Maybe maybe up that Okanagan Valley, very little. Maybe in some of those areas around Canloops, very little. But everywhere else, Caribou should see a couple mills. 13, maybe up in the mountains down south. Yeah, okay, even down around the Cranbrook area. Probably going to see a little bit of rainfall up there. In the piece, a little less. But I uh, could see six, eight, ten mils and places like that. So uh, even the piece getting a little bit of rainfall, uh, maybe maybe some gaps in Fort Nelson. But everyone getting a little bit of rainfall the next few days before we uh, settle into our next stories next week. So we'll see uh, how that all transpires. But as we know, there is that risk today of uh, crazy things could still happen today in BC. So you heard it here, folks. Please hit like, share, and subscribe. And uh, okay. Here's a member of the day today is Gerd Erasmus. Thanks, Gerd, for your support very much. Uh, it's people like Gerd that keep me going here. You're, you're the ones. And I oh, I, what I need to, need to explain quickly to you as well is this. I've had a number of people who've joined or have come to my Patreon here, and they're like, they come and they're like, 426 bucks a month. I'm not paying that. No, no, folks, that's not what you would pay if you join my patreon that's what i'm making so far right so that's my income right now it's 426 bucks a month uh plus a little bit from the youtube and a little bit from the advertising right but uh right now i'm trying to build this product this project and uh i got an income that's lower than welfare and i'm certainly working pretty hard right so no you do not have to pay 426 bucks a month if you put one dollar in that would be 427 dollars a month that i would be making so thank you the 61 people who are helping me keep this thing all going and afloat so please do not put 426 dollars in unless you're a millionaire then hey send me 426 bucks a month i would love that i fucking need it okay that's the show for today hit like share subscribe that's all bye